The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 20th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is tossing at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send that one off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A slightly mixed bag out there. That mix is really coming from the Dow, which is up 18 points. The other U.S. indices are trading to the downside. Dow's down, not Dow. Second time I've done that this morning. S&P is off 26. NASDAQ 100, 175. Russell 22. Semi's down 97. Tranny's down 112. Gold's trading out at 2038. That's up 14 bucks. While silver's trading out at 2305. That's off 42 cents. Lights recruit is off 61 pennies. With natural gas basically being flat in the 30-year treasury. Up 13 ticks. Printed out at 118.20. Now our leader to the in the clubhouse to the upside. It is Discover Financial Services. 15 bucks, 13%. Armstrong World Industries up nearly nine bucks or eight percent. Northrop Grumman seven bucks, nearly two percent. Intercontinental Hotels eight bucks, eight percent. Alta Beauty seven bucks, one and a half percent. A move to the downside. The Shakers are Cooper Companies down two hundred seventy-eight bucks. What the heck? Wow. That's a, that's a 74% move there. Uh, Super Microcomputer, hope nobody has stock in that. Super Microcomputer down 92 bucks, 12%. NVIDIA, 40 bucks, 5%. Micro Cloud Hologram, 50, wow, 50% move, 33 bucks. And uh, Broadcom's off 23, that's a 2% move to the downside. We got movers, but we've really got some shakers out there. But let's start our day by taking a look at what's going on inside of the equity futures. Let's do the play by play. Let's get down to the shorter term time frames. To do that, we're going to switch over to those white background charts of Stevie. So if you give me just a moment here, you'll see eight different charts. In the upper left hand side is the daily time frame. Daily time frame shows price pulled back, tested, and so far rejected support. That says we do not have a profile change in trend. That level of support to watch at day's end is going to be 17,531. If we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, no bottom pattern here, but price is testing a prior swing point. That was a TD9 count bottom. So far, that has held. We've got that same condition in the four-hour time frame chart, although there's no bottoming signal out here. Uh, if we did see, um, well, let's not go there. We don't need to go there. Let's take a look at the two-hour time frame chart. Two-hour time frame chart has a TD9 count pattern that is present. That will confirm when the show is uh, over at uh, 12 noon noon out there you can still see a lower low uh, because that bar can the td9 count bottom pattern can form on the bar following bar number nine that says by one o'clock we should have a bottom there's a bullish reversal candle as we come into the 12 noon time frame that would confirm a buy the d point pattern the 60 minute or the hourly chart has already confirmed a buy the d point pattern it did that because as we were coming on the air we had a bullish hammer candle that was formed now it's nice about that on the 60 minute time frame chart is if we see a close below it it being 17482 even steven out there that would signal that people should be to the short side out there 
Uh, well, with, 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 on, at least for the 60-minute time frame chart. I'm really just referring to the 60-minute time frame chart out there because if you're long, uh, when you close blow the hammer candle, the rhyme is if you're long, you're wrong. If you take a look at it, a 30-minute time frame chart, roads went to indicator bottom. Now, in the case of the 30-minute chart, that really bears worth watching. Why? Because price has bounced into the first target that – it should bounce into, and that is the oscillator and change line. The issue with the 60-minute time frame chart is if that oscillator and change line holds, that's at 17,594. That's telling us we're going to go back down and test the lows of the day. If price is able to close above that, that would then say a further rally would be likely. That further rally would take us up towards 17,624, and if the move lower was only a counter trend move, then price would find re resistance at 17,645. A close above 17. 645 would say something else. We have a um, buy the D point bottom in the 15 minute time frame chart. Price ran right up into resistance, the top of its profile. So you got 17,594 and you have 17,603. Let's make it the latter, 17,603. That's both the top of the 15 minute profile, the top of the 10 minute profile, and that would take you over that oscillator and change line for the 30 minute time frame. So we have, in essence, here, bottom patterns on the lower row. Each of the lower row charts out there, 60, 30, 15, and 10, have given us bottom, bottoming signals. The 120 minute chart is likely to do that in 48 uh, uh, minutes out here um, and then confirm that pattern at uh, 1 p.m. But we need to see resistance fail if there's going to be more of a counter trend move up there. So 17603 17, is the number. Let's take a look at the Dow equity future contract since that's the only one that's trading to the upside. Let's see what kind of signal information, if any, we can glean from it. So if you give me just a moment out here. I'll take a swig of water while these charts here go ahead and populate. Now, in the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it is consolidating with inside its daily profile. So support here is 38,370, resistance 38,920. Not testing any kind of levels of support, so it doesn't have to have those bottoming signals that we saw inside the NQ out there. And it turns out that uh, really we don't. The, I take that back. Earlier this morning, you had the Dow on its 30-minute time frame generate a roads momentum indicator bottom uh, it confirmed that on a 15 minute base at 645 this morning now what do we have going on out here we have price that has rallied right up into its breakdown resistance area at 38715 there was a close above it as we came on the air at 11 a.m if uh, 17 minutes from now we get another close above 38715 the dow equity future contract well I was going to say it would suggest that we want to rally further. But now that I look at the hourly time frame, we can see that price ran into resistance at 38,733. So the number that you're going to need to see the Dow Equity Future contract close above, and we'll make it on a at least a 30-minute basis, really it's a 60-minute basis, would be 38,733. If we see that, then at least the Dow Equity Future contract is likely to rally. As we speak right now, other than hitting resistance levels, on the bottom chart, it was a 60 and 30 minute TD9 count breakdown level. On the 120 minute chart, it's the top of its profile. And the other time frame charts, really not much out there. Uh, no requests thus far uh, that I'm aware of. So uh, I'll just continue surfing around. Maybe we'll take a look at the ES Mini. We probably should because we have a number of traders that trade that. So we'll do that. Of course, you can reach out to me at 877 927 6648. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I've got the charts here for the ES Mini up. I've got the 60-minute time frame chart up. And... You know, it, it, this does have an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. It's not, you know, it's 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 really not ideal. What I mean by that is the lower low is on the trading session from 11 o'clock in the morning. That's back on February 16th. And the high that we should really use would be out here from 7 o'clock in the morning. I cannot use this low that's from 5 uh, p.m. on February 16th because that low did not exceed this low right here. So I'd have to use really kind of a more of a junior if you will, A to B equals CD. So it's since we're uncertain with regard to the pattern out there, I'm not going to say, and you didn't even know what I was going to say, but I'm not going to say that the ES mini charts along the bottom row, which each look like they have bottoming patterns, in fact, do, because I can't call that a buy the D point pattern for the 60 minute time frame chart here for the ES mini. But we do see a bottoming pattern, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on a 30 minute time frame chart, 15 minute time frame chart, TD9 count on the 10 minute time frame chart for the ES mini. And the 120 minute will go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom very much like the NQ. Uh, it'll complete that pattern at uh, 1 p.m. And what price should do is it should rally towards that oscillator and change on to 5,006 out there. On the daily time frame, here we've got a bullish structure profile. If you caught the open of my uh, show. Uh, we were looking at the black background charts uh, for the ES Mini at the uh, 11 a.m. update out there. That's uh, the black background charts is a bearish structured profile. The white one, it's a bullish structured profile. I realize it creates confusion. We just have to use all the data. The next area of support here is at the 4967 area out there. So uh, what we haven't seen take place here, and that's really what I should have just gotten to right off the bat, we have not seen any resistance levels fail on those intraday charts that have those bottoming patterns. So what's the level? to really be watching here I would say it would be 5006 you need to get a close but make it 5008 if you get a close about 5008 we're likely headed up to the 5024 area um, and that's what I see when I take a look at the ES mini let's go out to Colorado and speak with Ron Ron thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you today very well thanks uh, Steve uh, this is Roger by the way oh Roger um, oh, I'm <laughs> Sure. My apologies. Um, My apologies. No, 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 no worries. Um, actually, we are all waiting for uh, Nvidia 
your uh, earnings um, announcement. Sure. And I was just wondering if you have time to take a look at um, Marvell. Yes, are you? allows Taiwan Semiconductor would be next. Okay, are you are you in Marvell? Correct. I've been you are in okay. and out uh, as a long term, like a, a yearly basis. Okay. So uh, here's what's going on, Roger, in the uh, short term. My apology for uh, for not getting your name correct. Right now, price is trading below, on a daily time frame, that is, price is trading below support. And price is trading below its prior swing point that actually formed on February the 1st. That swing point low was 65.51. If price closed below that, we're a buck before that right now. The signal would be that price is getting ready to pull back and test support. And the next level of support for Marvell on its daily time frame, Roger, is where it broke out from. That's at 59.95. That is the bottom of the candle session from January the 8th. You mentioned that you're more of an intermediate term, longer term trader. We have on a weekly basis a road momentum indicator top, and price is likely going to go target support. For it, it would be the top of its profile because this is a profile that formed below price, which was a bullish message. So the area of support that I would say that Marvell is likely to tag is the first level would be 63.21. If price closed below 63.21, we're likely to see it move to 61.15. 61.15 is where price should hold if the move lower in Marvell Roger is only a counter trend move. And on that daily time frame chart, 59.95 was where it broken out from. So it looks to me like that's where price wants to head towards 59.95, 61.15. But the only proof of that would have to be a close, a weekly close that is, below 63.21. On a monthly time frame, your longer term horizon, this formed a beautiful TD9 count bottom. It does it during the month of uh, January 2023. That takes price right up into its breakdown resistance line. It did that last month at 73 bucks. So resistance is held. This says price might want to pull back. The monthly time frame chart gives us an initial figure of 61.69 to about 59 and change out there. So everything that we've looked at, whether it's long term, whether it's weekly, intermediate term, whether it's daily, each of these charts here are suggesting that Marvell should pull back towards that, you know, to a, around the 59-ish range out there. Um, any questions about what I've shared with you so far with regard to Marvell? No, I really appreciate um, your your thought on this. Uh, it's pretty right. clear, but I just uh, need to, I guess, either write it or uh, or uh, do some take some action on this. You know, Roger, because you're a longer term trader, I don't know where you're in your position inside this, but I wouldn't really consider. I mean, yes, you got to anticipate you're going to get some heat out there. What we don't know is whether 6321 will hold or not. And we're at 6439. So I, I don't see, you know, necessarily because because on it, you're a longer term trader, we haven't seen any key levels of support really fail out here. We've got the topping patterns. Right. But price is pulling back to support. So you've got to do what's right for you, for sure. Uh, sure. But if you, do, if you do stay with the trade, watch that 63.21 area first out there. Now, are you also long NVIDIA? Uh, correct. You are. So we had a request to take a look at NVIDIA. If you want to stay on the phone, we can go ahead and do that right sure. now and get a, get a feel sure. for what it's doing. That came from Mr. Bill inside our Tiger's Den. So what NVIDIA has done, it formed a TD9 count top. It did it about four or five days ago. It did it on the trading session of February 9th. It completed that pattern on February 14th. And now what we have is prices back inside its profile. And that profile – whoops, sorry a minute. It's a little away from me. That profile – it ranges support is at 658.74 and we're trading below the center of its profile which is 691.51 i would say roger a close below 691.59 says 658.74 is in the cards now you mentioned nvidia is out with earnings tonight is that correct uh tomorrow tomorrow 21st tomorrow okay so if nvidia so nvidia's already got a top if it responds poorly uh, to whatever news comes out, the daily time frame chart says the key level to be watching is 6.16.50. Now, I'm not referring to the intraday or overnight hours because, you know, anything can happen overnight and the next morning out there. But if we do see NVIDIA begin trading below 6.16.50, the daily time frame is going to suggest that we have a change in trend out there. The weekly time frame has also set up a top. It's also a TD9 count top, and that pattern will complete this week. Now, in this instance here, price is above all levels of resistance. So even though we have a 
a weekly top confirmation out here because price remains above all levels of resistance. And when I say all levels, I'm referring to either 643 and change or 505.48. Its overall signal is neutral. Got a top, yes, but it's not one of those ones where we can see where it's gained any traction, at least just yet. And finally, on the monthly time frame trial, a monthly time frame chart. The monthly time frame chart is simply bullish. It is just simply outright bullish. So how do you summarize all this? Even though the monthly chart is bullish, it says longer term, NVIDIA should head higher. In the shorter term, intermediate term, we've got to watch 643. If price uh, trades below 643, that's a signal that price wants to move lower. That area would be 658, I'm sorry, that level would then be 616.50. I know I gave you a bunch of numbers. You're welcome to hold on if you've got some questions. Uh, if not, I appreciate the call, and, uh, and I'd look forward to speaking to you again. So that's your call. Like We're going to go to hard break right Thanks. here. Steve Rhodes with Thanks Roger. Thanks so much. You, you bet. In Boulder, Colorado. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back up, uh, folks. We got silver trading down 40 cents, and uh, G Man inside the Tiger's Den would like to take a look at its charts. So, we take a look at the monthly time frame chart. We just got a good old fashioned consolidation between 1987 and 2405 out there. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart as a sell the D point pattern 
Price is just consolidating with inside its profile. 2163 is support, 2439 is resistance. The daily time frame out here is an A to B equals CD pattern that is unfinished. A price on Friday closed above the top of its daily profile, signaling that maybe there was going to be a profile change in trend. But right now, price is back below that, so that was a false breakout message. It actually shows that silver is really in a sideways consolidation. If we open up the daily time frame chart, you pull it back so stevie let's get rid of the a to b patterns out here let's just get rid of that at this stage these can always be drawn back in here but let's just take a look at the pattern that really is prevailing as we speak right now which is that sideways consolidation so as i clean up a chart probably you are able to see that sideways consolidation as well but let's just pull this back let's get stevie's rectangular shape out here and let's just start to uh, draw it in so we're gonna say we're Right at about here from a resistance standpoint and support is going to be right at about there. So we can see this nice little sideways consolidation. So price was unable to bust it to the upside, G-Man. Perhaps what this is telling us is price is going to re get ready to bust it to the downside. At a minimum, I'd say likely price is going to go target 2265. Let's see if that's supported by the other time frame charts out there. On a 30-minute time frame chart, what we don't have is a top. What we do have is price trading below profile support. So I'd watch 23 even steep. And if price closes below that, that's its TD9 count breakout level. Well, that suggests lower price. On a 60-minute time frame, I don't really have it. Price is right now just consolidating with inside its profile. It's a brand-new profile. By the way, that's formed out here. You are an intraday trader, I believe. 2305 is support. 2321 is resistance. I don't see much else out here to really share with you. Um, I think that support level on the... Uh, on the 30-minute uh, time frame at 23 even Steven, the support level of 23.05 on the 60-minute time frame. Yeah, that's the key number, G-Man, for you to be watching to the uh, downside out there. If price closes below that, it just adds the idea of what we looked at on the daily time frame in that consolidation pattern out there. So I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for your request. Sticking with the metals area, uh, that says uh, that Nitram wants to take a look at the GDX. So let's get back there to the GDX. We'd like to take a look at the GDX as well as the Junior. So we're going to do both out there. Let's start with the GDX. The GDX has a TD9 count bottom. In fact, we don't need, need this daily A to B equals CD any longer since we already have a confirmed bottom. We don't necessarily need two. Price is trading above the top. I'm sorry. It's consolidating with inside its profile. G man, you have support at 2589. Price is above the center of its profile and that oscillator and change line about the 2673 area. This suggests that a move up to 2756 should 2756 should be anticipated. However, the weekly time frame chart shows that price is trading below profile, below support levels out there. So that could suggest that it wants to head lower. The benefit here is that we are trading above uh, last week's, not the high, but certainly at least last week's close. So it's slightly bullish signal. On a monthly time frame, the GDX is pulled back into its buy zone. The buy zone is set up by the bullish structured profile, the bottom of which is 2353. The center is at 2554. So prices is pulled back into support on the monthly time frame. We're trading above the close from Friday on the weekly time frame. So that's somewhat bullish. We're trading above profile on the asset and change line on the daily time frame. 2756 is really the message for it. Now, let's take a look at what's going on with regard to its dance steps. And by dance steps, we're looking at consecutive moves higher, consecutive moves lower. What we saw out here on Friday was three consecutive moves higher out there. So normal, if this is a bull market out there, real bull market, we should see not more than four, but Typically, you'd love to see just a two-day retracement or two consecutive days to the downside out there. Now, what's interesting here, um, if it's going to do that, if the GDX, we likely need to see gold move lower, and we likely need to see the U.S. dollar index move higher out there. The U.S. dollar index, I believe, is testing a area of support. So we should certainly take a look at it. But before we do that, Nitram, let's go take a look at the GDX uh, J out here, the junior miners. The junior miners have a similar pattern, a similar pattern that on a daily basis they have a TD9 count bottom. The difference here is on the weekly chart, we didn't have a bottom on the weekly time. I don't believe we did on GDX, but let me just go back and make sure. Maybe, maybe I'm, uh, nope, we don't. But on the GDX J, you do. And when I say you do, I'm referring to that TD9 count pattern. So this week is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count unless the GDX J were to close above. 
So if you want to find a bottom pattern out there, you don't want to see price close above 34.13, you get a weekly TD nine out bottom lining up with the daily. Now, we are in a bearish structured daily profile. And right now, price is testing a key area of support. Nitram, and that key area support is that red oscillator and change line, 32.29. A close below red oscillator and change line tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. That would then suggest that price might move back to support, which is the bottom of that daily profile, and that would be at 31.18. So watch this uh, oscillator and change line, the daily time frame. That's going to be really your key out there. Now, the GDXJ, much like the GDX, rallied for three consecutive days. A bullish pullback would be not more than two, really, but two to four. Four still qualifies out there, but if it's really in the beginning of a strong move out there, you'd really likely just see a two bar knee jerk reaction low out there. And of course, that would be confirmed with an intraday chart. For example, like a 30 minute time frame chart. If I pull that over here, and you'd be looking for some type of bottom pattern. That is not what we have as we speak right now. So, Nitram, I hope that helps you out both with regard to GDX and GDXJ. I personally mentioned the US dollar index. So, let's go take a look at it and let's take a look at it via take a look at the euro the yen and the pound or at least let's begin by doing that so we take a look at the euro which looks blank right now and it doesn't look blank anymore what we have is price we can see in the case of the euro you are now beginning to see higher lows out here each day has a higher low that's what I'm referring to coming off of the low that formed out here just a few days ago back on Valentine's Day on the 14th on Wednesday of last week the reason I bring that up Yes, that was a real nice poor job, wasn't it? I just dribbled it all the way down my shirt. Nice job there, Steve-O. And, uh, yeah, don't, don't take me out drinking. Okay, uh, even if it's water. Uh, so we're trading above yesterday's high. This suggesting on a daily time frame that price should get back. The next area of resistance would really be established by this bear sash candle, which we're trading into. That was the trading day of February 2nd. So if you close inside there, odds would favor move up towards its high at 1.08975. If, in fact, that unfolds, that will put strength inside the U.S. dollar. I'll put weakness. Hello, Stevie. Weakness inside the U.S. dollar index. The Japanese yen has got a TD9 count top, and right now price is trading below its green oscillator and change on on a daily time frame. That suggests that price might want to pull back, strengthen, U.S. dollar weaken at the 146 level. Now, those two things that we just said, if they unfold out there at Nitram, that's going to be good for the GDX and GDXJ. That would be good from the standpoint of gold as well. And that should suggest that they both rally up towards resistance, the top of those profile levels. And a great British pound is trying to influence its muscle. And a close today above 1.2624 will do just that and suggest higher price. So those three currency pairs, if they do what they are signaling right now, we haven't looked at the intraday charts, that'll actually put weakness inside the U.S. dollar index. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hope everybody had a, a great uh, weekend. Uh, a lot of good sports out there. How about the uh, end to that uh, Daytona 500 race last night out there? You know, it's, it seems like it always ends like that with just, uh, I mean, that was a, that was a pretty crazy uh, crash what, with, what, like about eight laps to go or something along those lines, eight, nine, ten laps, something like that. That was quite a, uh, that was quite a, a, a crash out there. So it was pretty good. How about the, you know, I'm not a big basketball fan i love college basketball and participate in you know the uh, the uh, march madness out there not real big in the uh, in the uh, pro uh, ball the miami stadium it's too long of a drive really to get down there and and uh, you know watch the heat games um for the most part but i did watch some of that um all-star game and what's the score it was uh, like uh, i'm not being really that facetious out i don't have the actual score at halftime but then they scored nearly 200 points in just the first half out there. So clearly, I haven't watched the All-Star game. Clearly, um, the message is no, no defense whatsoever out there. But what was pretty cool was, and, and not going to pro games or not watching the pro games, was the, um, just simply where they were shooting. The, the final was 211-186. Son of a gun. Holy cow. But, but they, where they were shooting from, they were not three-point plays. Is there, did they ever talk about going to like a four and a five point play out there or something like that? I mean, it's pretty extraordinary. Um, yeah, mid court swishes. It was, it was pretty extraordinary to see out there. So that, that skill level from shooting out that far. And they're shooting better than 50% from uh, from way out there. It's pretty, pretty extraordinary. And in the uh, golf, one of my favorite courses out at uh, Riviera, that is a great track. If you've never played it, you should really try to get out there. Um, I haven't played it for a couple of decades, but I used to play out there in the 80s, and uh, they never allowed for tee times. You never had a tee time. You just simply uh, showed up. Hey, I am showing the charts here, by the way, for the uh, currency pairs. So with regard to the euro, the yen, and the Great British Pound, I thought that what we would do is we'd go to the play-by-play -play here and take a look at the 30-minute time frame charts. I see that. I see that, uh, Al. Thank you. So if we take a look at the euro on its 30-minute time frame, it completed a sell the D point pattern. It completed that pattern when it form that three river evening star at 10 30 and price right now is testing that green oscillator and change line uh, if this level holds we are likely to see the euro in fact move lower if it moves lower then it will go ahead and uh, get stronger uh, get weaker i should say and the u.s dollar index will get a little bit stronger if i take a look at the u.s japanese yen it has a buy the d point pattern the exact opposite of the uh, euro but this is likely to rally towards that 150 area uh, and if it does that what that's going to do is that's going to uh, put weakness inside the uh, yen and that'll put strength inside the u.s dollar index in the case of the great british pound out here um Kind of tough to say that that's a sell the D point pattern, 
uh, but prices pulling back in sympathy. So uh, we should see, you really should see, depends on, you know, so the daily time frame that we're looking at that suggests those rallies, you got to really watch the 30 minute time frame charts for these equity, for the equity, for these uh, currency pairs to give you a feel for what is likely to unfold with regard to the U.S. dollar index. All right, let's go out to Ron. Now we've got Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Was that because I announced you on that previous call when I screwed up <laughs> you and Roger? Yeah, was that? I thought I'd say I must bug you too much. But uh, yeah, no, thanks no, no. for the time, Steve. Yeah. I, uh, I'll just mention one quick thing. Uh, Thursday, I knew PPI was coming out, and it included housing, and you knew that had to be inflationary. So when you get a long weekend like that, I like to sell options. So I sold the calls on the SPY and the IWM that expire today, and I sold them, and I bought them back today for 2 bucks each, closed them out. That's nice. But they expire. But that's just selling calls on a long weekend. Yeah. And letting time work for me. Well, nicely what I, done. What I wanted nicely to ask done. you about was the UNG. Is it? I was thinking of doing a call at 14 and a half and go out about a month. Is this the time or is it, uh, would you wait for further proof that it's hit bottom? Well, what I, what I can share with you, the question is proof now. So what kind of proof would you like? Um, with regard to, is it a bottom? It is a tradable bottom to make an attempt. So what do I mean by that? The UNG, at least as of Friday, I should probably look this up right now. Oh, we're not seeing the chart. Sorry about that. Thank you. Give me a moment. Because that would be a real problem for me to just talk through this whole thing again and then not show charts. But now we've got some charts out here. And, Robert, what I want to do, I just want to check uh, one thing, UNG, if I can get my holdings. I just want to see if we're still March and uh, April out there. So just give me a second here because it, it, need. it's important to be able to answer your question. So we now are exclusively in the April contract. Okay. So we're just going to focus in on the April contract out here, Ron, not the uh, March. In fact, I'm just simply going to get rid of that. I'm going to expand this out here. So the holdings with inside UNG, all 100% of the April contract. On the April contract, what we had take place on Friday was a buy the D point pattern. That buy the D point pattern was formed because of that bull sash candle. Now, this pattern would get negated if price were to close below the low of the pattern. So the low of the pattern would be a buck 63. So your trade setup, you could take that position. But if you saw a close below uh, that level again, let me give that to you again on the April contract, 1.633. Then the signal that we would have used to enter the trade would be void. And then at that stage here, I'd probably take the small loss and move forward. So the April contract now exclusively 100% inside of uh, natural gas. The reason to consider that natural gas trade run is because of the seasonals. I think you're familiar with them. Let me just put those, uh, pull those out here for all of our other viewers and listeners. And if we take a look at natural gas, we can go back a period of 33 years. And folks, what we're looking at here is a seasonal time frame chart for natural gas. If I go ahead and detrend it, just makes it a little bit easier for us to understand. We can see that natural gas basically forms a bottom right about now. And we're entering that favorable yeah, season. Okay. Yeah, uh, it should be showing now. Uh, so there's a little bit of a delay usually. So you can see we're in that seasonal, that favorable seasonal cycle. It's not a guarantee that we're at a bottom, but we do have bottom pattern signals out there. And that would be the reason to fire away at it, Ron. Um, but again, if you get a close below uh, the close of a couple of days ago, it negates that signal. It doesn't mean that a new one can't form because they would become bar number seven of a TD9 count. That says you could get a bottom between tomorrow and uh, Friday, uh, tomorrow, it'd be Wednesday, on Friday out there. But to answer your question, do we have a signal take a long position inside of natural gas on a daily time frame? The answer is yes. Is there, okay, is there some? I'll, I'll, I'm gonna go, I'll buy some today and or maybe walk in a few more tomorrow if it's if it's if it's heading up. Okay, so let's do this. I, I appreciate let's, that very much. I appreciate yeah. your time, sir. Yeah, you bet. And Ron, thanks for calling. Much appreciated as always. And sorry that uh, uh, I was just trying to get you to call. That's that's what I was doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm still holding on my GRRRs. <laughs> oh, good, good, good for you. So good for you. we'll see what uh, happens on those. They uh, anyway, they got warrants out there. Go out about five years first for six cents, exercisable oh, at a buck and a half. That'd be a, like a long-term call option. <laughs> that would that'd be a lottery ticket. That would be a yeah, good lottery, lottery. ticket. Yeah, lottery, right. Okay, thank you, sir. 
Okay, yeah. you bet. That was Ron in uh, Denver. Now, I, I did pull up the 30-minute uh, time frame chart, folks, for natural gas just for you to take a look at. Formed that nice TD nine count pattern. Price pulled back and held support its breakout level to buck sixty three. So another signal, really, for Ron or anybody else to go ahead and consider taking that uh, long trade out there. If price were to close below that, that would say we're headed lower um, out here. So as long as price holds a buck sixty three, it's still got that. You'd love to see a close above one point six eight two. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. All right, folks, folks, I'm told we got to look up Caitlin Clark highlights. Uh, she's an Iowa junior. I'm sure we're going to see some pretty amazing basketball stuff that uh, she does. So good for her. And I'll definitely do that after the uh, after the show. We're taking a look at uh, BKTX. Uh, this is uh, Viking Therapeutics. It has been uh, one little rocket ship out here. It's gone from two bucks up to uh, 36.44. We're trading right now. Now, on Friday, it completed the uh, TD nine count top out there, Dan. So what price should do is pull back to test support, which is around 32. 226. Now, you also have a wave seven uh, top that's in place that needs a lower high to confirm that pattern. A close above Friday's high on BKTX, which is 37.22, would negate that signal and suggest we move higher. The weekly time frame and the monthly time frame chart do not have topping patterns. They do have A to B equals CD patterns, and those would require some type of bearish reversal candle to confirm the top. So it uh, looks like we get a short term pullback towards the 32.26 level before it gets ready to take off again. That was VKTX. Ray in Sarasota wants to take a look at uh, Nordic American tankers. And that's not what I have up on my screen. Why did that do that? 
Um, oh, boy. Okay, well, let's go back to uh, this request out here. Uh, URA, this is for Lee B., and then we'll get back to Nordic American Trankers. Lee, you're looking to add to this. I'd say today or tomorrow, because this is a wide-ranging bar to the downside, let's wait till tomorrow. I don't see any bottoming signals on an intraday chart. So if you would be kind enough to get back to me tomorrow, just to remind me, I'll try to leave that up on my screen just so that we do it anyways. But you're looking to add to your position. You should get a TD9 count pattern that confirms today and completes tomorrow without any bottoming signal on the intraday chart. That's why we go bear, but go, go come back to it tomorrow. Nordic American Tankers for Ray in Sarasota. I think Ray was looking to add support. He just wants support and resistance. So Nordic American Takers, it's trading below support on the daily time frame. That becomes resistance, which is 429. It's trading below support on the daily time frame. It's South Southern Chain Zone, which is at 424. That suggests it moves back towards its recent lows. Support and resistance on the weekly, support 389, resistance 431. On the monthly time frame, support is 398. That's support one. Support two would be 351. So we got that in. Perfect. Hey, folks, thanks so much for joining me today. Have a terrific Tuesday. Stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Have a great day. Be safe out there. Take care.